ladies and gentlemen, get ready for combos. Well, let's see how long the opponent lets us do cool things. Triggers. What is happening? Commanders. <laughs> In my opinion, the most broken deck you're going to see. Monkey. This is Historic Brawl. This one is for the Historic Brawl fans. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and this weekend marks one year of weekly Historic Brawl content on the channel. Woo! Now, Historic, uh, I'll talk more about it in the outro, but back on that fateful day, I launched the regular Historic Brawl uh, age of the Covert Go Blue channel with Joyra, Ageless Innovator. So today we're going back to celebrate this now year old commander build and see about updates to it in the new meta because Honestly, with historic brawl videos, I want to do, especially the ones I like, I would love to do them like every time a new set comes out, but I only get to do a few brawl videos on the channel every week, and I want to make sure that I'm showcasing the new commanders, so a lot of my friends, the ones that I enjoy the most, I don't get to play as often as I'd like with all of you, and maybe some of you who built those decks are wondering what happened to them. If anybody actually built Joyra Ageless Innovator from my video about a year ago, and you still have it, uh, let me know in the comments, because that would kind of be epic and cool. So, Joyra, in 2023, so much has changed with this deck, and actually playing it now is like, it's very resilient. I think it's significantly stronger than it was before. Now, you saw from the freeze frame of the badly haired what was going on with my hair? I, it was just so weird. But it, you saw from the freeze frame there, it was a, definitely a Paradox Engine deck. It was pretty much straight up Paradox combo. And the whole pitch was that you can sneak the Paradox Engine in with Joyra and it can't be countered. So uh, if you haven't seen this one in a while, still legal and standard, nobody plays it. A blue and a red, two, three. Tap it for two ingenuity counters, then you can put an artifact with mana value X or less from your hand on the battlefield where X is the number of counters. So first time you tap it, you get a free two mana artifact. That's basically ramp, like you get out a little ramp rock and you go to four mana on turn three. That's epic. And then uh, the next time you're putting out a four mana rock, you know, item and so on. And uh, it's a very strong card. The uncounter ability is very strong. The thing that I lean into with the rebuild that some of you may hate and your opponents will definitely hate, which is exactly what you look for in a strong deck on MTG Arena. What your opponents will definitely hate is I lean into the stacks element. Now, if you're not familiar with Commander, uh, you might not be too familiar with stacks. The best thing I can say for stacks to the unfamiliar is Thalia is a stacks card. Thalia making all of your non-creature spells cost one more is a typical stacks card. They make the thing you want to do more expensive or prohibitive. Uh, Archon of Amiria is considered a stacks card because it lets you only cast one spell each turn. Like those are stacks, things that restrict you from doing what you want to do. And with Joyra, the reason that Joyra is a great stacks commander is because if most of your deck are these powerful artifacts, you can keep putting them out with Joyra without casting them. So things that make spells harder to cast uh, makes actually Joyra a little bit better because you're still doing your game plan as long as you have Joyra while the opponent's floundering to do theirs. So the stacks pieces I have in the deck include the Thorn of Amethyst and we have Lodestone Golem. These were both printed in that Brothers War extra set and those cards tax the opponent and make it harder for them to cast their stuff. God Pharaoh's Statue is the stacks piece that I've been loving the most in Historic Brawl because it shuts down first sliver Emoti and kind of the uh, itali the cascading type things and now that those cards are still in play queue but atroxa has graduated to hell queue it makes a little more sense to really go after that kind of effect and then uh moving along on some other things that feel kind of staxy when your opponent's struggling to cast their things what's the next best thing to do to them land mess with their lands we've got a's uh We've got Stone Rain hiding here. Just blow something up. We got Blood Moon. That's not very nice. And we got Rhystic Study when they can barely afford to pay the one. You get cards off them. We've got the Karn the Great Creator. We also have cards like Phyrexian Metamorph and Surgical Metamorph, an alchemy kind of clone effect. And those can copy your stacks cards like Thorn of Amethyst or Lodestone Golem or Godfrey's Statue and really tax the opponent out of the game. So... 
we can do that game plan or we can just engine combo them. Engine combo with one ring is really good too. So that's the deck. Um, the evolution of it is kind of cruel, but hey, you can't accuse me of playing a million counter spells. I have just the right number. This deck is fun to play, and it's a fun update to the archetype, and it's a fun way to celebrate one year of doing this type of content on the channel. So without running my mouth any longer, let's just get into the gameplay. But first, thanking our sponsors, CoolStuffInc.com and Moxfield, and check out Ultimate Guard. I'll have a link in my descriptions for you very soon for Ultimate Guard that supports the channel. For now, just know I joined the team and let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. New discoveries await as we venture down into the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. All pre-orders come bundled with a brand new exclusive Covert Go Blue Dinosaur Token. Every single sealed product, commander deck, bundle, everything that's coming with the new set gets upgraded with a new Covert Go Blue token for free. Get your pre-orders in and see what awaits at the center of Ixalan. CoolStuffInc.com. Cool stuff in stock. The Scare of God. Terrifying. What a commander. No red mana. Mulligan. Two colors, kinda. Yeah, the smashing does it. All right, we're on the play. We're going Joyra into Power Stone or Fable. Should be pretty strong. What kind of commanders does Joyra go against? Will it be kind of refined, powerful commanders? Scare of God's kind of scary, right? Scare of God gets respect. Are they ready to kill something on two? They shouldn't have kept a hand that wasn't. Although, don't tell them. We don't have anything to cheat in with Joyra here. One thing I definitely remember about playing this deck, you just throw your commander out there and hope. Okay. Well, Babel. And we'll put some counters on Joyra. We're definitely on the move already. What are you going to do about it, opponent? You can target the commander or just play a relic. Okay. Activate. Nothing. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's discard the Brotherhood's End. This might not be the spot for the unwinding clock, if I'm being honest. My idea is that it's the second paradox engine that when we get several things together, it can combine to be greater than the sum of its parts. We'll let it go here. Ooh, the thorn. So right now we get a power stone for free, so we probably want to cast the thorn after we make the treasure. Non-creature spells cost one more to cast. A little stacks action, huh? And you're like, but, but CGB, look at your hand. They're all spells, but Joyra lets us get out this power stone. And then the next turn lets us get out the statue for free. So the idea is that it's much worse for our opponent than for us. Chupa Lupa. Make them pay the one they've got. It. Of course they had a creature that would do this. Okay, activate. Power stone. Transform. Combat. They probably block. And then we statue them. That seems pretty good. Raw statue. Three more to cast on some of your stuff. Do I play the Juari? I think we save it. They are getting stacked right out of here. And they've got Rusko. The Iron Price paid. Oh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's a good one. All right. Solemn. Solemn Reflection is really good value. It must be said. Block, get me a card. Pretty please. Ooh. 
Ooh. All right. You could play this as a land. I still think it's going to counter something at some point. Especially now with the solemn thing going. I don't think we have to uh, be in rush to play our Juari. We got mana everywhere. They bin the graveyard shift. Let's see, is it commander time? It's Junji, which I can't counter because it's not blue. It's a pretty good one. They're trying to put the pressure on me. Ooh! 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 <laughs> do I have the mana? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I do. I do. To your hand. That's going to set him back a bit. But since I was almost a mana short, time to play that Jawari. Should have done it a while ago, probably. I'm known to be a little greedy with a counter spell. So, back to the stacks game plan. What a tough time for a tap land. Rusko is here. Immortal Sun. Oh no. It's too too brutal. Oh, it's so powerful. Keep it coming. Feed me more. Oh, I'm having way too much fun with this. Yeah, your Ruskos can't block them now. And since they sack on end step, we still get to draw. Lightning Bolt! By the way, I'm back to regular casting costs because my Immortal Sun offsets my thorn. Get out of here, Rusko. Nobody likes you. Hey, but opponent, don't worry. You can play your Scarab God and get Rusko back, right? They totally can. Don't worry about a thing. God, we're not even doing Paradox Engine, and our deck is so freaking evil. Junji again. Lorian revealed and counterspell, huh? Can't hurt. I mean, as long as I've got this value train going, let's send this in and see what card we draw. Iteration. Sure. Were of invention. What artifact would most lock this down? We could go get Paradox, but we don't quite have a combo with it yet. We go get the one ring and just start drawing a bunch of extra cards. I'm trying to think, is there one more Staxi artifact that could really shut him down here? Well, I know I don't have anything over... Like, I have my sixes here. So I think it's five or less. So let's go into the deck and see what happens. Metamorph the Junji? Processor make a monster stacks them harder. I Like stacking them harder. I think I get the lodestone golem just for the lol and That's gonna be game Vorinclex mono green well Joyra probably won't die, but will she do something powerful not in this hand no blue Okay, oh, oh, oh ragavan. I mean there's no artifacts here, but does it even matter? We have a turn one Ragavan into possibly turn two Fable. Sand is just bonkers. We'll see if the opponent has turn one Elf. That's what they need from their mono green deck. You should mulligan for it probably every time in the meta right now. Just always have an Elf on one. 
Monkey. Well, Lucifer. Monkey. Ah. <laughs> All right, then. What do we got here? What'd you got? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give Explore. We could play another land this turn. Sounds cool. Oh, feel it. Feel it. Feel the vibration. Oh, that's sweet. If I hold the Lorien revealed. Don't want to miss a land drop. All right. Prototype. Beautiful. Uh, we could put this on top, make them cast it again. Or we could use it for mana. I think the opponent will block here, right? But am I ever going to get Ragavan through again? I think we just take the deal. Fable. I mean, five mana too, right? We just embrace this. Joyra. Paradise Druid. Throw these two away. Big ol' artifacts. One mana is a counter. Let's do this. Why'd I have cast that? We could have put it in for free. I'm hoping to ho I'm trying to save this for the channel. That was stupid. No! Forgot to add counters. I'm just... I'm too into myself right now. It's embarrassing. Top of the deck, please. I mean, you could go bottom. That would be fine. We go top. Because our next turn isn't too exciting, I think. We'll just go, is it beat down Cyclonic Rift Tempo? Two big old mana generators. Counter spell off the top. Alright, nine life. You can give them to one next turn. Another Paradise Druid. Another Gwenna. This one will get countered. They're playing it out. Oh, well, that doesn't do much to them, does it? What you got? Down to three. And we finished the job. They're gonna have a good amount of mana. They got the greeters. They got the canker. Should probably blow up the reflection. They didn't gain life. They're at three. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. What are you doing? There you go. Shatter Skull Smashing should be good enough. We'll plow the road. Just to be sure. Smark! Is it tempo, obviously? Pia Nalar. Pair of two mana, two color commanders. Ooh, lightning bolt in the opener is like cheating. You. All right. Well, guess we gotta do that. No Pia. Priority checked me. Nope. No Pia. All right, Joyra. 
Let's see what happens. Lightning bolt. Virtue. Soul partition. Sure. Uh, decline because it's like it was taxed anyway, right? That's the right play. Okay. Opponent is full of hater aid. That's all I'm getting from this. Hmm. I guess we'll get ready for the immortal sun. That's my plan. They're probably going to try to make an army, so we have to draw into things that stop said army. Here we go. We get a treasure for that. I don't have an answer yet. Let's go Immortal Sun. Hold on to your butts. This part's probably gonna hurt. At least they have to make their Thopters post-combat. They're probably gonna exile a few treasures. No? I'm just gonna play Fable? Yeah, that's a good board. Can we draw a Sweeper? Can we draw anything useful? Anything at all? <sighs> Not yet we can't. Um... This is not good. I was really counting on something better. Iron Craig. Care to sack to draw? All right. Well, three, four. Uh, now we'll turn that into equipment. We'll pay free precious life to have Counterspell open. And we'll hold on to our butts. They keep the cards. That's, that's great. Uh, no. I've seen this card in action. It must go. Dude. Dude. Talk about never didn't have it. This one's been embarrassing so far. Can we top deck out of it? Inventor's Fair. Inventor's Fair. It's something. So is this. It is a body that gets in the way. And this. And you. It's one in a tap, right? So I can draw discard here. According to this, I can still play these. Oh yeah, I can tap for two mana. I don't think we get the pound here on the battlefield. I don't think it matters. It's too slow. So, draw a discard. That's gonna be our solution. How close am I to dead? Pretty close, huh? They can make Thopters here with the Face Breaker and the Treasure if they know how it works. We got the Stonebinders familiar. Looks like they're going for the cave. No. Okay, just the land. Make a Thopter. Uh-huh. Mouse. Ugh. Okay. Can't be blocked by creatures with power three or greater. How convenient. How convenient. What a beautiful number. Should have kept the Iron Craig where it was. Mm-hmm. I mean, am I dead? One, two, three, four, five, six. Block, block, seven, eight. I think I see eight. Well, let's find out. Opponent's thinking about it. If I'm not dead, can I go get a Paradox Engine and do the thing? They don't go for the kill. In one, draw, and draw. That was not good. <laughs> Two lands, huh? That's what I get. One, two, three, four. Then one, two, three, four. Play the engine, play the sapphire. Then what? I don't know. Figure it out, right?
Uh. I could also get the one ring. Try to draw out of it that way. I mean, the odds are better, right? I'm I'm far more likely to get there with the one ring, I think. I think Paradox Engine is just a road to nowhere right now. If I attack and scry, they double block. If they double block, then what? Ah, we need the scry. It's the bottom. Ragavan. I'll never get through. No, you're never gonna get it. Uh, we play it? Can it hurt? If we play the Sapphire, then play the Lantern. We can still use the terminal, right? Yep. Definitely should have left this as uh, something else. Okay. Get a lot of looks next turn, like five cards or something. If we find a way to copy the ring, maybe we get to live. Oh, it's probably gonna build a nice cool board. There's an ember cleave, hello. All they need is a bone crusher giant, which I'm sure they have in their deck. Don't forget to attack with two more so your Ember Cleave is cheap. You wouldn't want to run out of mana this turn. There's so many cool options. Now, come on, opponent. The right play right now is to exile with the Face Breaker during combat in case you hit that Bone Crusher Giant. Then you can Bone Crush your own thing and damage can't be prevented and I die. You missed it. Haha. -ha. They're going to feel bad if they draw a Bone Crusher Giant. They won't even know. All right, this is it. We've got to get there. We've got to get there. Stop flooding out. The owner of target non-land permanent puts on top or bottom. Uh, okay. Okay. Channel. Target the one ring. Top. Activate network terminal. Draw. Discard. Cast <laughs> the frickin' one ring. Protection from everything. Activate Joyra or the Celestis. Cast. Well. Enter tapped. Cast time twister. Hello, toys. <sighs> Pass turn and draw. It doesn't look like this is going to get there either, but that's why I said last time. Who knows what could happen? They got seven new cards too. I just happen to have protection from everything. Stop counting my stuff. It's no big deal. Surely they can't do anything about all this stuff. Ordeal five to my face on my upkeep. Surely that won't happen. Love how careful they are. Will not attack all. I will attack with precisely what I mean to. Move to end step. Sweet. Got enough stuff over there? 
We go to five. We draw, and it's a land, and it's a land. I am so good at this. Oh my god. WTF. What is going on? Come on, Paradox Engine. One time. Paradox Engine. Helix me. I'm at two. They had it! I don't think they know how the card works. Well, we take our L's. That game was cursed. Epically cursed. Apparently I am doomed forever. I will only play against the most aggressive of decks. Uh, I mean, this hand is going to play a turn two Joyra and maybe get there. It does have a nice curve. Yeah, I'll reveal to them that I had it. Of course I had it. All right. Max Amber is nice, but I don't want to show it to them. I don't have a use for it here. I will next turn, though. Nothing. That's not how it should be, opponent. Could play key. Could also play Karn. Could also just hold up Prismari Command and Bank Buster Draw. I told you. All right. Banky. Draw. Nice. Amber down. Might as well hold Bolt for a better target. I'm picky. Let's see what we hit. Get that key right into play. DT. Love that for me. Let the bolt go. Hold. We're taking full control on this one. Ah, they drew a land that makes all the colors. Is it too late for them? I think so. But I'm not sure what they would have done last turn if they didn't do lethal demolition. Right, draw. It didn't take any action. That's weird. They go for Haro. Oh no. Oh no. They had to sack a land as part of the cost. No. Oh, I hate running that card. Oh. They got stone rained. Can I just go off with engine here? My tutor for it? Not quite. We'll tutor the other half of the combo. The one ring. Actually. Actually. Uh, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to be that guy. Until you have lived as a statue, do not talk to me. Oh, man. Gross. Stax guy coming through. Non-artifact spells cost one more to cast. Reading. Sobbing. Casting a way too expensive Llanowar Elf. The Crag. Well, first things first, let's look at some cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This requires eight. Can I do it? I can. Oh God, not like this. That's me. Stax guy. 
coming through. Evil cannot withstand. <laughs> Game. <laughs> sometimes you're engine guy, sometimes you're stacks guy. Yeah, I know. I'm the villain now. You see that Miss Landrop? You pounce on it. Cheat on a wounded gazelle. You become stacks guy. You become a Thalia you swore to destroy. Ishin. Okay. I played against this Ishin deck before. I think when I was playing Kellen earlier today. It was an interesting build. Much more disruptive than I expected. Well, this hand is fine. It's got Mox Amber, so we run that. They run cards like uh, Duress and such. So maybe we want to get the Ember out of our hand. Amber. I keep saying Ember. I mean Amber. Of course. Then we hold Brainstorm for the turn one Duress or Thought Distortion. There isn't one. So let's keep holding it. If they've got the removal. Old Steel Heart. Alright. Brainstorm. Got the lands. We're activating it for two. We want the counter spells in hand. I guess these can hide. But they're coming right back. I'll just put the tome a little further down. It's a good combo piece. So we're activate for two again, Iron Craig. That gives us five mana this turn. Oh. Well, that's really good. Could play this and play Palantir. I d actually don't want to mill this, and we can keep up the counter, the uh, tail's end rather. Behold my toys! I have to be ready to counter a Karn the Great Creator. After all, everybody should be playing that card the way artifact decks work in this format. Nadar, get out! Home off the top. We can sneak that in. Definitely tap this. We want to leave up blue and blue. Leave up the archive if they target it to destroy it. Get this thing cooking. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You want to mill? Take some damage. Let's leave the processor. We're still at 23. Those creatures will be insane. That is a counter spell. Guy, what can I say? Had it all. Next turn, I was going to start making 11 11s. Shieldred. Fortunately, Shieldred takes a while to come down, so in theory, Jorah could do the damage, but not on a one lander. Hate throwing away that Mox Amber, too. Turn two Buster. Counterspell for Shieldred. It's not great, but we'll try. They can't easily deal with cards like the Immortal Sun. I'll let the time warp go. Definitely doesn't gain a good advantage here. We miss a land. Oh, we draw a red land. How nice. Maybe this is going to be fine. I have a feeling if I play Joyra, she'll just die. Let's play an artifact instead. This feels like Shieldred's Edict to me. Did not draw the land. Hurts to play that Juari Disruption. Swamps. Let's draw. Please draw land. Thank you. And a land. Slow down, opponent. You with that stone rain. How am I going to Blood Moon somebody if I keep playing mono decks? Yeah, that's right. Ooh. Should probably just play this before they can duress it. Careful. Opponent frustrated, probably, by all these artifacts. We can draw now, because they can't duress me or thought seize me anyway. Oh, the stronghold. Could have stone rained that. I was thinking about that, too. Alright, they got a planeswalker. Cannot 
proliferate my ring, maybe? Guess not. Hit him. Now their discard spells are online, so we have to be mindful of when we draw with these cards. Yeah, activate that. See how it goes for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad, I know. And you're mono black, so... Unless you put Cityscape Leveler in your deck, which I sometimes do. For this very reason. It's not like you deal with artifacts well. And bolt. A discard effect. LOL. Wherever will I get the cards to discard? Monitor is three. Lightning Bolt is one. Rebuke him. Rebuke him. It's not much. Just a setback we can do again later. We get a lot of mana from that thing. Do I want to counter it? Yeah, I guess I do. Just slow him down. Can't have him beating me to death while I'm figuring out my life with the One Ring. Ah, the statue. Lovely. Although they still have this stronghold. Trophy Mage. Fifteen life. Gotta close the game. So I guess we get, like, Tome? Can't cast Tome this turn. But this is a 3-3, so I can start attacking with a Bank Buster. Tome is a little dirtly. But we be dealing damage now. Pyrexian Gargantua. You draw two cards, you lose two life. Wow. You got it. You're hastening your demise. Let's draw. Narset Ragavan. Ping. Down to 11. Lotus. Monitor. Terminal Amethyst. Keeps taxing them out. What do we get? Salt strobe, double strike. It's an ability. Um. Hmm. Do I remove you? Am I down to paying five next turn? All right. Screw it up. Strobe it up. Casual 10 points there. Dash the monkey. Make him block it. Yep, gotta block the double striker. Invoke despair. L O L. And I play the Gilded Lotus and cast it. I think I'm a mana off. But one thing I'm sure of is I need to hold up this wash away. So I can't use the Lotus after I cast it, but it's really funny that I almost invoke Despair lethal them.
I have to be ready for a corrupt or some kind of direct damage. So, gotta have the wash away available here. Massacre worm. Yeah, that can get that can get countered. Had enough that they could have dressed me then massacre wormed. But then uh, we could have tried to draw into a counter spell with the one ring. Opponent scoops it up. <laughs> what a delightfully ridiculous game. I gotta be real with you guys. I don't feel like I've paradox engined anyone. Anyone. It just hasn't happened. We're up against rats. The sewer king, Lord Skinner. Mono black rats. Another one lander. This keeps happening. Kind of weird. Hey, that's Ragavan on the draw. And a gnawing vermin in the path as well. No. What does it say? When it dies, target creature gets minus one, minus one. Well, go get a monkey. And they mill two mana rocks. Pretty good. Now they can't attack with their vermin. I'm gonna play a blood artist and probably say go. All right, a couple of six mana artifacts we have to work our way up to. But Metamorph is online next turn and it can copy something? Land probably? That card's pretty good. It definitely has to be the Ragavan because they're giving minus one, minus one to something. So Ragavan, we're looking like it did nothing. It did something. It absolutely did something. It kept me <laughs> from getting destroyed by the Demon Disciple. Stone Rain them. Brainstorm. Or Metamorph. Metamorph as a land. I really want to hit like a two mana artifact. That might not be realistic. And I do almost nothing if I miss. That's really bad. So, Metamorph, we need to ramp. And I can still brainstorm and try to hit that two mana rock. I kind of missed that it entered untapped. I just assume it didn't, but yeah. You can copy a land and have it be untapped. Nice. Well, it hasn't gone for the skitter yet. If they play it now, they're missing out on a rat. They got Liliana. That's brutal. Well, we're going to get some value. I don't think I have time to stone rain them anytime soon. Am I playing the Immortal Sun next turn? I get out Mind Stone? Yeah, that's what I'm playing. A fight? And you think you can win? Did your job. Now we have to draw out of the situation and not die to their creatures. And there's going to be plenty of rats. And that's bad. <laughs> we'll have this 3-4, though. Drawing Jawar is not the greatest. <sighs> it's a race. Racing Blood Artist is hard. I'm gonna have to try to combo. Thought Monitor is pretty good. If I play this, I can't also play the Monitor. Man, is this tempting, but I take a beating for it. It's you. 3-3, three, three, draw two. Flock. Land. Pretty happy. Stone Rain. Tick tock. No. Oh, wait, yes. I knew I did that for a reason. What about the Exaxes? They're gonna be going right after me, though. Uh, maybe not. Just the Disciple. Cool. 
stupid blood artist. Stop. All right, big draws. Ooh. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, with two left over. <sighs> awkward number. Awkward, awkward number. It would be so much better, too, if I could get the statue down first. I don't think they can kill me next turn. I don't think they can. Gotta have faith. Stacks and counter stacks. Gotta have faith that they can't kill me here so I can riff them with this statue on the board and really drive them crazy. Yeah, they pass. Seagate. Land. What you got? Plague Crafter. Oof. I guess there's no way around it. So... Can do this though. It's kind of cool. Give up your Liliana. Okay. And rift you. Gonna be a fun to recast those. <laughs> Rebuke. <laughs> Don't tell them. It would break their heart. Alright, bye. <gasps> Stax wins again. Where's my Paradox Engine gaming? Paradox Engine just cut it from the deck. Terrible card. <laughs> Hasn't done anything for me. Uh, sure. I'll have to draw land, but that's like every hand I ever play. Even if we don't, there's a chance this could be functional. Beautiful. Joyra is here. Removal check. They traverse the Ulvenwald. Probably a swamp. Nope, they get a forest. Bajuka bog me. We untap with Joyra, but have no use for her yet. I'm just gonna play this processor. Or this relic, I should say. Say go. If they let me get this processor down, we're going big. We're going 13s. Two hit clock. No regrets. Dude. Seriously? Now I need an untapped land to do the processor thing. Don't get it. Got the trophy mage, though. And we can get a power stone. Probably better to get a clock, right? Because it threatens to be seven new cards. Power stone's more mana, though. Right now I need the mana. Ooh, I should have gotten a Celestis, right? Something I could wash away with when they play Thalia. But no, they're going to play a Tortoise anyway. Getting the processor down doesn't matter if you can't make the creature. Rebuke is online. But let's bolt the bird. AKA Tortoise in this case. You like to block with the plant you got from your garden? No? Okay. Plan. Wash away Thalia. Play processor. They're at 23, so a 12 12 will do. For two turn clock. We could also go for the one turn clock. Just make a 23 23. Rebuke them win? Oh. Oh, that could be beautiful if they actually. I mean, if they leave themselves open to that, I'm gonna do it. 
I have decided that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> well, 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 well. Can't counter it. I have to draw a way to remove the thingy. We'll go 21 because, well, we'll go 19, right? We just have to draw a removal spell. Hello. Okay, seems good. How about that 01 blocker from their land? I'm gonna make another. <laughs> I'm so stupidly lucky. <laughs> Dumb luck is it's way better than being good. You should try it. You should really try it. And we are back for the post-game wraps, and I would talk about decks and win rates and things like that, but that would be disingenuous to what I'm really feeling today, so I'm going to speak from the heart. And not everybody, uh, as much as people, like, crave authenticity, they want authentic people, not everybody wants to hear what my heart has to say. But uh, I think that the people still here in this video, staying till the end of this, an historic brawl video based on a video I made a year ago, will be down with it. When I started this channel, I think that my calling card became, or at least when Arena came to this channel, that I was just going to play Standard no matter what, because Standard was the most popular format on Arena. It was the format I played growing up, the only format I really loved growing up. I did limited, I did extended things. <laughs> a shout out in the comments if you know what extended is. Um, but I did that. Um, type 1. But it was always standard for me. And when Arena launched, it was a mini standard. Like, the beta was just Ixalan. <laughs> it was literally a set. And then it expanded out to include standard so that when Arena actually launched, it had uh, a standard format in it. And then they slowly added other formats, and people love to use other formats for variety and looking things, but standard is the most played, and has a very strong following, even as standard's popularity has waned over the last few years, and Wizards has kind of done all the things they've done for the last few years that have really hurt the development of standard. And I just stuck with it, because as other content creators took vacations, or as other content creators made videos on other formats, I just kept doing standard because that's what the audience wanted. And, you know, about three, four years of that just standard every day. I I know other creators called me and crazy. Like every time I talked to, uh, I remember casting with Jeff Hoogland uh, specifically. He thought, he's like, you do a best of one video on standard every day. Yeah, you've done that for three years. Yeah. He just like laughed at me. <laughs> like people don't, really realize how intense the burnout can be and I just powered through it again and again because well for one thing I definitely wanted to be the most watched standard player in the world <laughs> I, I I wasn't shy about that um I may not have said it out loud to you guys often but like when I got up in the morning and I tried to stay motivated to keep going and went and looked in the mirror I uh, very much was like all right we're on a mission. You don't want to play Magic today. You don't want to play that format today. You don't want to play against Mono Red 10 times today. But we're on a mission. We're going to be the most watched standard Magic player in the world. So we're going to do it. And uh, that got me through a lot. You know, it's amazing how stubborn I can be. It's kind of my calling card, really. Above all things else in this world that you can call me, I am incredibly hard-headed and stubborn. And uh, when I want something, I will run through a wall for it if I want it bad enough. Um, but when it came to Historic Brawl, I really found 
and, and Commander. Commander had a lot to do with this, finding Paper Commander near the end of the pandemic, and then the new game store opening in my town, and then I started hanging out there and playing with some of the people there, and then the worst possible Commander show started up. You know, that's all part of the lore here. But Historic Brawl, you know, also being a format that I just got really into and was like, this is a lot of fun. But I felt handicapped, like I could never do it on my channel. Like... The opportunity cost was high. If I make a Historic Brawl video and it gets half the views of a standard video, it isn't just the mental anguish of, oh, I let half the fan. It's not like just the, oh, I had bad views today. For me, it's I let half my fans down. And now on top of that, picture this, because there's a video out there about how much money I make. I released it, so don't try to make it a secret. I was making like $30,000 a month at the time uh, playing standard. It's not like that now. It's down to like about 20, but it's still absurd amounts of money for playing video games and playing Magic the Gathering uh, from YouTube. So if you picture, I get half the views, half the monetization per video, like say I did that for a month, you know, it's like $15,000 that you gave up because you wanted to play Historic Brawl instead of standard. Think about how that affects how you would enjoy a hobby if doing what you really want to do was giving up a huge amount of your revenue and letting a huge amount of your audience down picture the mental toll and it was actually it was harder than i think anybody realizes to say to like commit to okay i i want this to be a thing i want to share my love like my love for historic brawl with my audience I want many of them to come around and, and love this with me. I want this format to be successful. I want it to be on arena well into the future. I don't want them to take it away because those who may remember the origins of historic brawl are wizards didn't wizards has never believed in historic brawl and arena. I, I think they were given the instruction to do it and somebody did it, but I never think they believe in this format because they didn't give us a queue. It was an event you had to buy into for the longest time just to have a queue. They, event, they, they even released a thing saying, we don't have enough players for a queue. There won't be good queue times, right? Oh my goodness. I remember just fuming over that. Eventually they gave us a queue. We lit up that freaking queue. I don't want them to take it away, right? And I, I think that the queue came out like a month or two before I started making these videos. And I was like, you know what? You know what? I, I want this to stay. I want this to be a thing. I want people to love it the way that I love it. So we're going to make regular Historic Brawl videos on this channel. And I'm just going to try. I remember I put them up on Fridays when I always get bad views anyway. Like my views are always the lowest on a Friday. I was like, well, Friday's going to suck. I'm just going to put them up on Friday. And I'm not going to look at the numbers. I'm just not going to look at the numbers. And I'm going to try not to feel all those bad feelings. And to this day, when the comments come in on my Historic Brawl videos, where's Standard? I miss Standard. I know it sounds like a mean mocking voice. This is part of me coping because in here, I feel bad that they feel bad. They relied on me for their standard video entertainment. That is a privilege. I'm a lucky person. And I feel very bad when people leave comments that oh, I don't love the historic world. Terrible alchemy cards. It's just like I cope by doing the funny voice. But in here, that hurts because I do take my responsibilities as a creator to you seriously, which hopefully by now, you know, because my God, I release way too many videos. Um, so yeah it was very scary to do historic brawl videos it took a big commitment a big emotional load uh the likes of which i hope you never have to fully understand but i'm trying to explain a little bit now because we stand here a year later and the story has a happy ending because it could have had a very sad ending right i could be retiring historic brawl content from the channel i could be doing only standard and i could be a shell of myself who plays historic brawl on his phone every night to cope with the misery in his heart that he's not chasing his dreams and doing what he loves but instead we have historic brawl on the channel a year it made it you guys followed through you guys have been there you guys have enjoyed it and when i go to magic cons now Thank you to everybody who's come up to me at a Magic Con and said, I love your Historic Brawl videos. Like, uh, when people say, I love your Historic Brawl videos and I love your Commander show, I, do, I realize, okay, I, I'm not just, I always thought of it like this. I always thought 
if 50,000 people watched a standard video of mine, I had then that's my current fan number, 50,000. I have 50,000 fans in the world. And if 20,000 people watched a brawl video, then that means 30,000 of those people of those fans just don't like brawl and the other 20,000 came from me. And if uh you know another 20,000 watch my commander show, same thing. But what I've realized at Magic Cons from talking to people is that's not true. What it really is is I have like around 20,000 like of those 20,000 people, there's probably about 5,000 people that come just to watch me. And there's probably 15,000 people that are there for commander or for historic brawl and they don't watch my other stuff. They're not interested in standard, which means I actually have more fans than I thought I did, which means I'm actually serving more people than I thought I could, which means I'm not just letting people down. That's and that emotional journey is very positive and it's helping me do more of what I love and enjoy doing it, which is helping me be here for the long term. And I just want to give a big thank you to those of you who accepted historic brawl into your heart, made that journey with me while I figured out all this stuff, and enjoy the historic brawl videos. Uh, those of you coming up saying, I used to play standard, but now historic brawl is like my favorite format. Thank you so much. Like, that's what we do it for. I'm glad so many of you have made that journey kind of from uh, getting back into Magic through Arena and then getting into Historic Brawl and getting into Commander. And now we sit down and we play four player social games at events instead of just sweaty talking about like what sweaty card in Standard is best against Mono Red that's been the same 60 for the last year and a half. I still appreciate and love Standard. I don't love where it's at. I don't love what Wizards is doing with it. I'd like to think that it's capable of a comeback. And I'd like to think that I can love Standard like I did in the past again someday. And I will definitely continue to make Standard content because I do love my audience. But my god, do I love, <laughs> love Historic Brawl. I love the deck building. I love the puzzle. I love that it can be competitive in a sense of 1v1 online games usually do default to competitive and that's okay. Get that outlet, scratch that itch, and then you go to your store and you play commander and you get a lot of that same like identity through the commander, but now you have a social game that can just be played for fun. I love that it can be both. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful game. Magic is a beautiful game. And now I'm just rambling. So thanks. If you stayed till the end, leave me a comment. Let me know, like, if you love Historic Brawl, let me know. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next one. And here's to another year of weekly Historic Brawl content. You're cool. Command Fest Orlando is coming October 20th to 22nd. So get ready for a weekend full of Magic the Gathering in one of the country's premier vacation destinations. Get your tickets now at commandfestorlando.com.